Welcome to The War from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Well, folks, we draw near to Pearl Harbor Day, and we're going to play the last of our three uh, presentations from uh, 26 by Corwin. This particular one was actually the first uh, broadcast, but I think it fits well here. So here, from June 1st of 1941, is the appointment. The Columbia Workshop presents number five of 26 by Corwin. Appointment, a new radio play in part-time verse by Norman Corwin, featuring the author in the role of Vincent, with an original musical score composed and conducted by Lynn Murray. What's a six-letter word meaning Eurasian catnip? How should I know? Well, what's a five-letter word for a method of cooking? The fourth letter's T. Well, if you want me to do the puzzle for you, just leave it until I finish my writing. Don't expect me to do two things at once. It's been done. Very well. Now let me write. Excuse it, please. This is a hateful hymn. And sing it, please, fortissimo, at all betrayers. A psalm of sourish milk and galling honey. Anathema and worse against the tyrants and the traitors. This is pure hate. Pure hate, great X, and certified, and stamped and sealed. Hot wax, print clearly on the label. Blood. Hiss in their faces. Breathe onions at their name. Gouge out their eyes but not in fun for money like the wrestling clowns. Oh, we who love and love can hate. There'll be no spring this year. Put it away, put it aside. No summer either, neither autumn. The wreaths and laurel, put them in the icebox. Seasons will keep, and liberty will not. This is a curse upon the quilt-scratch killers squiggling terms on parchment. The Caesar breed, so brave with anybody else's life. The generals, a stripe for each desertion. What are you writing there, Vincent? Oh, a hymn. A hymn? Oh, well, I guess a cell brings out the monk in you. You'd make a fine friar, Vincent. All you need is a cowl and a surplice. All right, order me one of each. Remarkable. Six months of the cloistered life and already writing hymns. Well, the cell's the proper setting for such ecclesiastic enterprise, I grant you that. A little over-grilled, perhaps. A few too many guards by the basilica. Machine guns on the transept wall. I'm glad you're amused. Is that actually a hymn you're writing? Yes. A hymn in prison? <laughs> that fits like lust in heaven. Okay, it's inappropriate. A hymn to whom? To Althea? No, guess again. A hymn of adoration? Does it feature seraphim? Top billing for the Lord? What kind of hymn, Fra Vincent? Well, if you must know, a hymn of hate. Oh, oh of hate? Yes. A four-letter word meaning one day we'll get even. One day we shall keep appointment with some swine. I get it. Uplift for the sagging soul. Vitamin V for vengeance. Well, if it strikes you funny, keep it to yourself. Suppose you stick to your crossword puzzle and leave me to my writing. Those are crosswords and no puzzle. Vincent, you're an idiot. Thanks. Your wordplay stinks. Only six months in the state's most exclusive prison camp and you've sunk to writing frustrate hymns of hate. What do you mean, frustrate? Has it more bars than your cell window? To which wall will you sing it when it's finished? It gets something off my chest, doesn't it? Is that frustration? Six months ago, you were tough. Your mind was sharp and cutting as a carborundum wheel. Uh, you fought without an oath, without a curse, without a whine, expecting little and hoping much. 
Now you're back in high school. You've returned to adolescence. Oh, so... Your thinking's pimply. You're writing mash notes to yourself. Composing hymns of hate. Ah. Whom are you serving by your planless venom? Hiss in their faces. What are you, a snake? Snakes hiss and spit venom, but they're also stupid and abominable. They're not what you'd call planners for the restoration of lost liberties. I suppose since I share this cell with you and it's both small and badly ventilated, I'll have to listen to your natural history and your parables. Well, all I can say is that if I'm back in my adolescence, then you... Here comes Mushface. Uh... Peter Boulogne? Yes? Commandant wants to see you. See me? Yep. What does he want to see me for? Come on, come on, come on. If I knew what for, I'd be Commandant myself. Just a moment. Vincent. Yes? This is how they took Moran last week. If such should be the case with me now, then I'm saying goodbye. No hard feelings. I think you're a wonderful fellow. Keep fighting. They don't dare! No! Shut up, Jervais. Peter! Shut up! Come on, you. Peter! I can't do it to you! Swine, let me out here! Rats! Peter! What's wrong with that guy, anyway? In there. Balan? Yes? Come in. God, you may go. Very well, sir. <clears throat> uh, uh, no, take this chair, Balan. I want to speak quietly. Yes, sir. Look, you're important and we need you. We need you out of here. We have work for you to do. We? Yes, we, else I shouldn't be whispering. I don't understand. Of course you do. We, the opposite of they. Must I go on? I'm afraid so, sir. I just don't get you. All war is told in three words. We and they. The enemy is they. Now, no more questions. Don't make it difficult for us. What do you want? To arrange your escape. Next Tuesday, I am moving you to solitary confinement. Cell D on some pretext or other. Now, the three middle bars of that cell window will have been filed almost all the way through. They can be broken. But don't try it until 2 a.m. Thursday. You... You're plotting? Now, don't be an ass. I haven't any time for incredulous surprise. You endanger me if this doesn't work out. Well, I'm... Study this slip of paper. It's a diagram of your escape. I'm going to burn this slip before you get out, so memorize it quickly. What's this line represent? East wall? Yes. You go down this side. Yes. Stay close to the drain. Mm-hmm. Crawl on your belly across here, where the shadow of the tower falls across the yard. I see. The searchlight controlman is a friend. He will swing his floodlight to the north for two full minutes. And that'll give you plenty of time to get over the wall. On the other side will be a milk cart waiting. Get in that without a word. Now, have you memorized this now? Yes, sir. Very good. Thursday morning at two. On the stroke. The moment you hear the bell strike twice for the guard shift, you start. Don't waste a second. Very good. Your hand on that? Oh, I should say not. Suppose someone should open that door suddenly. And make it snappy. Good luck, Beline. Keep fighting. Thank you, sir. Keep fighting. This is Robles. I have just spoken to Balan. He will try to escape Thursday, 2 a.m. See that the floodlight is turned toward the sector between Solitary and the East Wall. You can get him easily with the tower guns. Don't miss. We've got to make it obvious to all the prisoners that he was shot trying to escape. What? Yes, I know, but I've been all through that before. Balan is too popular outside the prison to be executed in the ordinary way. What's that? Now, that's final. Yes, right. Well, that's that.
Oh, murder, murder, murder. Not even decently in quiet ambush like an honest black vendetta, but in the white publicity of 50,000 watts. The perfect crime. Floodlighted by arrangement and on cue. A cheap production. Subtle as a circus. Stock props and stale routine. Exit, Peter. Exit. But the show goes on. They carry off the corpse and pack it down with lime. That's fine. Great work. On track. Now, where are the scene shifters? It makes no sense, my stone-dead friend. It can't be stacked their way forever. That's foul construction. That is crawling drama. Vitamin V for vengeance. Yes, another pill of it, the bitterest yet. You laughed, Belloin, you laughed. I weep for it. I mourn you in my fashion. Yes. More salt per cubic centimeter of my unshed tears than in the wettest wailings of a new-made widow. Henceforward, I shall laugh for both of us, but only when the time is riper for the kind of gag a free man can enjoy. Peter... By the still living marrow of your broken bones, I swear I'll tie the score. The dog who ambushed your escape will not escape my ambush. I'll quit this place one night quite solo, with no passwords, proofs, or helpful hints on how to die. No hanging round for bells to strike, no filing of the bars. And once I have no further truck with these smug walls, I'll keep me an appointment with the commandant. I'll get him when the getting's good and proper. Sniffs beyond the bloodhounds. A hop and skip ahead of rifle range. I'll stop and try to catch fifth wind. This is how the world appeared to Lazarus. The evening he returned. All night... Deep night, black velvet night, dipped into by the dipper, dusted by far galaxies, older than ancient lights. How many suns have flared up in the endless seasons of the dark, then shriveled like burnt parchment, leaving night as always and as ever. Thanks for the blanket night. Oh, holy night, sweet saints of owls and prowlers, bats and fugitives. To what crimes have you been accomplice that the breadth of day has not promoted thousandfold? A spot of burglary, crown jewels stolen, or a loaf of bread? What of the felonies upon the rights of man accomplished in an afternoon? Of statute making. Do they accuse you, Knight, of shielding now and then a rape or two, or a little killing? 
What of great armies that attack at dawn? Now, you lying mirror, what are you giving me? I've spent eight months jugged up, not 80 winters. Surely these hollow cheeks are shadow paint inside your glass. You are not silvered. You are tinned and rusting. Insult me to my face? No mirror gets away with that. Peace to your pieces. Let's see you image something now. Yet in this broken view is preview. In just this way, I'll smash the commandant. How many Peters has he already trapped? How many future Peters fall for him? No more if I can help it. There's my responsibility. My vow will corset me. I shall not fluff or fumble. Tomorrow night, as every Sunday night being his night in town, he passes with three aide-de-camp the shaded corner of the concourse where it meets the strand. Eleven on the hour. I'll be there before. Come here, dear Rod. Good gun. I kiss each cartridge in your barrel. This is the caliber of vengeance. Six pills of V, the quickest acting vitamin. One dose of it, and no more worries about health. The concourse on the strand, and what a junction it will be tomorrow night. Long ago, in some dispatching post of heaven, it was ordained I should stand this hour. Mm. There are more crossroads here than meet the unsuspecting and pedestrian eye. I'll have just time enough to mark my men and cut them down before they glut me with my very medicine. Five pencil, please. Here you are, blind man. Thanks. Move over, beggar. Soon I'll share your blindness. I will know the color of extinction and the taste of dust. I'll see the earthworm eye to eye. But no, no less pity here, no ingrown sympathy so close as this to trigger time. Drain back into the funnels of the mind, irresolute idea, back thoughts stop tingling in my spine. Do I hear laughter in the crying air? Uh huh, I see. A man and maid. I should have guessed. Here's such indifference to earth and its affairs as only clouds know, upwards of 10,000 feet. The moist, clasped palms, the gently bumping hips. 
the spring of foot, the pride of bosom, body scent, the texture of the kiss. Here, with this easy and domestic gait, so insolent against the world, walk witlessly the ancestors of generations we shall die to free. Love's a delicious vacuum which nature least abhors. Let atmospheres of matters, tides, and tempests stand aside, make way to tour. Let art sculpture its own epitaph, and science crawl into a test tube, pull a stopper after. Love is the one stuff workable and ready the system patent proof, the only method endlessly producing in a planet strewn with wrecked machinery and the ashes of burnt books. Salut d'amour, crown Venus with a helmet renovated from the bloody head of Mars. Huh. What does love care? about economies and termite-eaten empire. The anode is aware of naught but cathode, and the spark can wreck of little but the gap between. Wait, what snooper is this on his way? A cop, constabulary, looking with a fishy eye. I'll feign a bender. Hey, you. What are you hanging around for? Uh, uh, was you, uh, you, you dress, you talking to me? What are you doing here? Oh, that's all right. Now, now don't apologize. I, hey, I want a, I want a drink, buddy. Uh, say, say, you're off to the law. Well, 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 that's fine. Now, uh, uh, have a drink. To Come on, you. bum, oh, beat no, it. No, no. Beat it now. Uh, I, I'm just a, a street car waiting for a corner. That's all. All right, I'm hustle along now. You're still here when I come around well, again, I'll run you in. Okay, Osho, okay. Now, goodbye. Sweet dreams. Happy landings. Goodbye. Okay. Yes, yes. Yes. He'll be full of recognition later, the old bull. I thought he looked suspicious, he would say to himself. But his report, turned in at midnight, will forget he saw me here. Two minutes to eleven by the company. What if the commandant does not show up? What if he's transferred to another camp? He'll come all right. I feel it in the flexion of the air, the declination of the horned moon, the signaling Vincent! Of... Who? Mark! What are you doing here? You startle me. More to the point, what are you? Let's pull into this doorway. How can you stand so conspicuously in such a public place? Why, the papers are full of your escape. Here, wear my coat to cover your eyes. Have you gone mad? No saner man's alive. Well, you won't be living long at this rate. No, you, if you don't get away from here. What do you mean? I'll just take a hint from an old friend baptized in the same blood fighting as yourself. Get going. What's up? Listen, I'm here to kill a man. There's no time to explain. He'll come by any minute now. To kill a man? Why, you'll be caught and shot in ten seconds. Listen, I know that. I expect that. But if you're with me, you'll be shot as well. Now, there's the hour. He's already late. Listen, will you scram? I know what I'm doing. Who's late? Robles. I swore to kill him before he gets to other of our men. You'd better leave me now. You're a dead man if you stick around. I'm telling you. You mean to tell me you escaped for this? To assassinate an epauletted jerk? You must have left your brains in prison. All right, I've warned you. Now, don't obstruct me. You'll die for no good. You for less. In 50 minutes, Robles will be succeeded by some stooge just as bad or worse. You're hitting at a hydra head. Two rats grow in the place of every lizard. I'm sick of temporizing. Are you Joe Hercules or somebody? You think you'll kill the monster single-handed so that it stays killed? Okay, mythology, I'm for. Look. I hold a stick of thunder in my side pocket, see? Now, look. I saw Mark murdered in, in, in cold blood. He was my cellmate, closer than a brother. And the sight still smarts. Would he have approved of this? I have no way of finding out. Not in a million years, he wouldn't. It's too late. Too late to argue now. Here they come. Leave me this split second to stand quiet. I'll stay. Your blood's not on my hands, but on your own. That's fair enough. I only hope you realize what this amounts to. A beast in a war of cannon. Shut up. Trigger's cock. Nothing can stop me now. There's Robel smiling and happy. Uh, watch his face when my little colt here greets him. I'll watch your face when their moors curtsy back at you. Quiet. 
Here's payoff coming. You assassinate a leaf and leave the twig, the branch, the limb, the tree, and the roots. None of them sees me. Peter, stand by. Peter would have called this adolescent. He... What did you say? He'd have called it adolescent. What makes you say that? Because of what it is. Listen, Peter did call me adolescent. Six days later, he was dead, but the last thing he said to me was keep fighting, and that's what I'm doing You now. hope. What do you mean, I hope? You're giving in, not fighting. Vengeance is cheap, and so is suicide. It's individual and lonely. What comes dear is man in concert. Fighting freedoms fight with plan and calculated action. I've got a beat on him. He goes. Hold it. Keep off the trigger and live to fight another day. More happily than from a darkened doorway. Take your hand off that gun or I'll break your jaw. This is best, Vincent. Keep it down. <laughs> it's all right. I don't mind a punch on the jaw. It saved you. You're alive and of more danger to the enemy than dead. Well, Mark, you've had your way. The opportunity goes down the street there. I... I can't believe I've let it pass. You did nothing. And you did it well. Let Peter stand by longer. He'd prefer to wait until there are more of us in a bigger doorway at a greater junction in the world's affairs. to Appointment, a play in part-time verse written and directed by Norman Corwin as the fifth in the Columbia Workshop series 26 by Corwin. The special musical score was composed and conducted by Lynn Murray, and the cast consisted of Norman Corwin as Vincent, Everett Sloan as Peter, Paul Stewart as Mark, Arthur Vinton as the Commandant, Ed Mayhoff as the Turnkey and the Beggar, and Tom Tully as the Cop. Others in the cast were House Jameson, Norman Lloyd, Bartlett Robinson, and Ruth Gilbert. Perry Lafferty served as associate director for tonight's program. Next week at this same time, the Columbia Workshop will present the sixth of 26 by Corwin, a new fantasy for children called The Odyssey of Runyon Jones. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. WBNS Columbus. Welcome back. The poetry didn't work in every place, but I have to say overall I was impressed with it and impressed with Corwin as an actor. And some of the lines were just uh, fantastic. I am Thor, and in my hand I hold a stick of thunder. That's just great. And of course, for the Nazis and fascists, their appointment with justice was drawing closer. Well, that will do it for today. We'll be back tomorrow with a look at fence bonds. Be sure and be with us then. If you would like to share your experience or that of a loved one during World War II, please email your stories to box13 at greatdetectives.net. 
will consider all stories to be shared on the air. We also welcome your suggestion as to future programs. This program is dedicated to those who fought and died in World War II and is presented as a service of the great detectives of old time radio, greatdetectives.net. The opening theme is The Heroic by Ken Curlin, kencurlin.com.